Similar to Assad, Libya's brutal dictator, Gaddafi, faced discontent and then rebellion which flared up in early 2011. In March that year, NATO airstrikes led by the UK, US and France were authorised on the grounds of protecting civilians after Gaddafi's forces marched towards the rebel-controlled city of Benghazi as he issued murderous threats. Airstrikes significantly aided the rebels, resulting in Gaddafi being overthrown a few months later. Ironically though, these same nations which helped overthrow Gaddafi had in fact been the ones arming him for years. The British government supplied Gaddafi with millions worth in arms sales over the years preceding this uprising. £35 million worth in arms alone in 2010 were provided, a figure rising to £217 million when dual-use equipment is included. Additionally, our government also found the time to train a military brigade named after his son. The British company, NMS International, organised a UK pavilion at a Libyan arms fair a mere four months before Britain began to bomb the country. Worse still, there was no clear plan to bring peace to a fractured and unstable Libya after Gaddafi was removed. Even a Foreign Affairs Select Committee in 2016, with a Conservative majority and chairman it should be noted, published a report declaring the Conservative Prime Minister David Cameron failed to develop a coherent strategy on Libya. Our government's failure in the aftermath of Gaddafi's fall, alongside the US and France's, worsened Libya's slide into chaos, which in turn helped enable the rise of ISIS and civil war there. Only after years of lawlessness and destruction is a fragile peace now holding. <laughs>